so as you can see, uh, today's video um, was titled something a little different. Uh, so basically, um, it's just like a normal video, but I just didn't start out normal. So I thought about like, well, what would I do for just like a normal art video? Like just drawing. So I was like, oh, just drawing. So we're just drawing. So that's today's video. Um, no product review, you know, nothing, um, uh, you know, no art challenge like Inktober, just me drawing. So I did all my whole setup and thought I would try out doing just like kind of my basic drawings, like tentacles, like starting with something that I like and I'm familiar with, and then uh, doing some like alcohol uh, marker stuff because I really like that. So this is going to be the finished piece, a little snip in the corner. What I'd like to know is when you go to watch art videos, do you like when they show you what the end result is going to be? like ahead of time so you know what you're waiting to see get done so I kind of did that little like sneaky like little picture um but is that what you look for because I know like some artists do that and some don't so one or artist I follow uh Torian I don't know like her username if I remember I'll link it um but she you might already know her she's a really popular watercolor artist so her stuff's amazing and a lot of times the art she's going to make in her YouTube video she has in the thumbnail and Sometimes I'll click on it because I'll be like, oh, I really want to watch because I love that art. So, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think you'd like to see that first? Or do you like to kind of be surprised at what you end up with? Curious. Here's another thing, like swatching. I love swatching. So, you didn't see me swatch this because, like, I've swatched this when I got this set of markers that I have. So, right now, I'm just, like, looking at them and, you know, trying out what colors I want for this piece. Uh, the particular set of markers that I have are very dark very you know I, I wouldn't necessarily say they're very pigmented I guess you could say that but they're just not like pastel there's not many light colors so like you can see like there's a few like two rosy couple well, one rosy color one light pink um there's like a flesh tone like white color like white people color and then there's like some grays um which are a little cut off on that shot but that's about as much as you get for um for anything like pastel or to do light colors that would build up. So you really have to start figuring out the colors. Um, so right here, this thing I'm using is um, a really skinny, cool light table. It's a, uh, I don't even know how you say it, Huion? Huion? If you have it, let me know. And I mean, I'll say I have no idea. So what's great is um, you just plug it in and it's super flat. It's like like a thin book. Um, and then I'm able to uh, adjust the brightness of the screen. So as I was doing this, I realized that for the sake of the camera, I could see it fine. Like I could see my pencil lines through on the Bristol. Um, but what I realized is you're not going to be able to see that on camera. Like I kind of took a minute and backed up. So I'm just going in now and adding marker. I wouldn't normally um, need to do this for my process, but I figured, well, I should you should be able to see it on screen so anyway um but this light table thing is really cool um you can adjust the the brightness of the light um you can and it's just flat so like it fits anywhere it goes you know it can you don't have to have like a whole apparatus and a whole setup i actually use an old laptop sleeve to keep it in there just to keep it kind of safe and so i'm not like jamming it in a shelf next to notebooks um, but it's really cool because it's so easy to use and it just plugs in it has like one of those usb plugs so it plugs into like your little usb blah, 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 your little usb brick that most everybody has for some kind of phone or device or like directly into a computer or something um, so super simple to use and that button is on and off but it, it also can slide your finger up and down it so the button just moved to the top of the screen because I realized as I was doing it, I was kept touching it and hitting it. I had it upside down. So anyway, that is done. Um, I did that and now I have my sketch. So now I'm going to go in with my color. And I was pretty happy about the colors that I picked. So I think it's, it's pretty good. I, I was going for something kind of rosy. I'm always going for pink, like bright or hot pink or like bubblegum pink. And I love pinks. So I was trying to like do pink, but I wanted to to tone it down a little bit um also because when when you work with markers like that's it you don't get an undo you don't you can't select all and change like the color um, and that's something like i'm doing more and more now is working with traditional art uh well i guess what i would consider traditional art which would be like markers um you know and and tangible things instead of just digital art i love digital art 
but doing it this way is definitely a challenge. Definitely for me, uh, it definitely takes more pre-planning and a thought out process. It's sort of like even making these videos, you know, there's a little bit of very, you know, minimal amount of like storyboarding of like, okay, well, I want to do this and I want to talk about this and how do I time this? You know, something like that might go on. But when you're like planning to put ink to paper, it's permanent. So it's like if I make a decision to use a certain color and I go, that didn't work, like it's done. Like there's very little you can do to fix to fix that. Um, I will say the Bristol paper uh, really worked well, I thought, for these markers. I have not used any good marker paper, like paper that's just dedicated for alcohol markers. I haven't used anything like that. If you have a suggestion of what kind of paper, I would love to hear it because I haven't. Um, some paper I've seen has been expensive. So for me to try it out and not and being such a novice with the markers, I just didn't want to do the investment. But if someone suggests or recommends, I'll definitely look into trying it on someone else's recommendation. So let me know what you use if you use alcohol markers and what kind of paper you like. After this, I might try the paper that came with the Art Snacks box, the Inktober box. I never really used that paper for Inktober. It was just too many things to keep up with. Just drawing every day was hard enough. <laughs> so I just couldn't even keep up. But that is a, the cotton rag paper. So I've never used that, never heard of that. So I do like trying different papers. It, you know, it's always, um, it's one of those things I think when I was a younger artist, I didn't think materials mattered. Uh, I would use anything I had highlighters at school, any kind of pencils. Um, sometimes I'd get like a free pen from like a bank and it would just be the best pen. So that would be the pen that I would draw with like that whole week. And so when I was younger, I just, I, I didn't think about how good products mattered. Um, and especially paper, it was printer paper and notebook paper. And like occasionally, like if my mom would spring for like a sketchbook or something, or really my brother, my brother would, would, give me lots of cool things, lots of papers and lots of uh, different art supplies because he's an artist. But I didn't really think about the value of good quality art supplies. So it's it's been one of those things that's even been a journey for me now as an adult in my art and uh, in like how I'm growing or doing different things as an artist is like really starting to favor certain materials or and not necessarily think that other materials are bad or useless. But to say, wow, like this type of paper or, you know, this um, brand of marker or pen makes this art so much more enjoyable and easier for me to get what's in my head on paper. Um, I love big black, like inky lines. And that's been like a thing. Like I have so many black pens and markers and brush pens and watercolor pens. Um, this has become a really fast favorite for things that I want to be really smooth and sleek. It's um, I think it's called the Kiritaki, maybe. Uh, I think the feud. Well, I think one of the feud. Uh, it's got a number associated with it. I can't remember. But the the large brush nib, yeah, 55. Uh, the large brush nib on this is like a rubbery feeling. And it's so smooth. And I should have left the sound in my video. Like I'm speaking over it, but I didn't leave like my ambient noise. It gives such a satisfying like squeak as it goes down, it like goes on and it goes, ee, ee. <laughs> okay, so I'm not doing it so well, but um, it's so smooth. And the one thing that I learned by experimenting with this brush uh, or marker rather brush pad on different paper was on this Bristol, it goes on so smooth. It goes on with no resistance. You can see the shine. I don't know if you're like zooming in on this, but you can see the glossiness as it's drying that it just reflects because it's like laying on this paper in such a different way. Um, I also like to use it with some textured paper because then it gives a little bit of a bleediness that kind of stems out, which I like. It looks a little messy. But in this instance, this to me, this piece um, on the Bristol, using that paper really helped me translate the digital art mind that I have where I know I want it to be crisp and vector and look a certain way. The, these materials, these supplies help me to achieve that look that's in my head. So I just think that's really cool how you can use a different piece of paper and your whole art piece could be totally different. So like on textured paper, um, you know, like I have some like hand bound books that have really, really thick and like um, 
almost like gridded looking paper, like the pattern that's that it's, uh, I guess, like the cotton or the fibers in it. When I do something on that paper, it has a completely different look and feel. I can use the same materials I use, you know, on Bristol or on smooth, um, smooth drawing paper, you know, like a low tooth, I guess. And I get a completely different look. I even like sometimes experimenting with just drawing or using markers on watercolor paper because sometimes the markers, especially if you're using just like brush tip markers or, or obviously watercolor markers, then they're like soaking into that paper a different way. Um, but using the alcohol markers or, or even just different types of pencils because you're going over the watercolor texture. Some paper is like way more textured than other. I'm not like super well versed in it, but I know like the cold press uh, type of paper has like a different a different feel so just just doing that I feel like those are the types of things that probably everybody else was doing as like a teenager and like art class and like paying attention to and I wasn't I was just like give me whatever materials you have and let me just do whatever is in my head and let me get it out so I feel like in early in my art life I was just like like for lack of a better term just like vomiting my ideas onto paper with anything I had nearby and then as I matured, like, you know, my 20s, I started to refine um, those things I liked. I know I, I'm a big chaser of style. So it, it took me a long time to, to really look at my art and go, okay, like, where am I? What am I doing? What am I focusing? What am I trying to do? What am I trying to show? And, and then do I care? So like, do you guys think about that when it comes to your art? Do you think like, what Am I trying to communicate with this? Am I trying to communicate anything? Like, do I, am I giving you a message when I draw my, my tentacle knot? You know, am I trying to share something? What am I doing? So I don't know if you guys think that way. I definitely always scrutinize it. So if you have some thoughts of what your art is trying to say, let me know. Um, if you can hear that adorable little sound in the background, that would be my daughter, Pearl. <laughs> so I don't know if you can hear that, but I definitely can. Um. So, so yeah, so with the Bristol, the other thing that went on really smooth was the jelly roll. So I just started using the jelly roll pen um, to come in here and highlight. And this is something that's very different for me when it comes to traditional and digital art is in the digital art, I can lay on any color on top of any color. So all I have to do is make another layer in my file. Um, so in this case, the white, in my opinion, wasn't as bright on some of the parts like it wasn't as as clear which is just a matter of like the ink laying there the paper being very smooth and the ink kind of um just hitting it and then you know when you go back and forth with like that roller ball you end up kind of mushing the white ink around sometimes and it doesn't look as as thick as like a nice opaque line i thought it showed up pretty well on the darkest of the tentacles so i was happy about that because that would make the most sense, like you're getting the most contrast. But what was odd was the lighter tentacles, I feel like it just melt, melted in a little bit. I don't know. So I'm still happy with it. I think it turned out pretty good. I like, I, I still like the way um, it all came together. But just noticing that difference in art supplies has been um, a fun thing for me to reflect on as I'm doing these pieces. And then I have to reflect on them be when I because I'm turning them into videos so that's also really something I think in my art I've never done before I've never sat and looked at everything and really wondered like oh what I was doing or thought about my own process like I have to be really um intentional to make videos because I have to have like the the materials I'm going to use in front of me I have to have an idea of what I'm going to draw um so yeah so let me know like if you do videos or if you're doing art on Instagram like how do you go into a project how do you decide what gets into a video, what gets posted, what's worth it, what's not. So like, as you can see now, that is my Instagram shot. I was trying to find a way to showcase the different markers and items that I use to create the piece. Uh, so there it is. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, thanks for listening to me go on and on and on. Let me know what you think, like, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe and hang out with me. Bye.